Hello, I am Jan from Prague, the Czech Republic, and in this video we will explore the Canon R5 Mark II and test the key features, shooting performance, lighting fast speed, and remarkable focusing systems, including the Eye Control AF. In short, the things that make it one of the most powerful cameras on the market. And <laughs> we've got docks, peacocks, and a wooden penguin to help. Let's get to it. What's coming up in this video? First, we will summarize the most important points and then we'll explore autofocus, speed and general settings of the camera, as usually with the help of photos taken in many places and situations. We will focus almost exclusively on photography, but at the end we'll also touch on video. In fact, in the next couple of minutes you'll get the most important summary of what really, really matters, and it's the speed and autofocus. You can see it here, a dog is running through a beautiful nature and the camera is really able to capture every detail, everything, and it's just amazing. And this is what really, really matters in this review and generally this is the key information about this camera. It's indeed a great tool for those people who just want to have a chance to get details uh, like this. Either when shooting dogs or animals or birds like here, you can see that the details are great. If I zoom to the detail, the eye is perfectly sharp perfectly in focus, despite the fact that this is shot on aperture 1,2. Well, in fact, you've just learned the simple most important information that this is really amazing camera for shots like this. It's great that it's able to be lighting fast and uh, it still is able to capture so many details. I was using only two lenses for that review. One was 24-105 f4L. These are photos taken with RF 85mm f1.2. And it's really important because it's a prime lens, it's a portrait lens, and uh, because I am using the aperture 1.2 for these shots, the depth of field is extremely shallow. Typically, it's not the best idea to use that uh, shallow depth of field, but I really wanted to test it, and I really wanted to sort of, you know, torture the focusing systems of this camera. And here are the results. Aperture 1.2, or aperture 2,8 and again the details are just amazing. So that is the core of the review. If you want to have a camera which offers you a great image quality and uh, these technical miracles that you are able to, despite a very shallow depth of field, to focus on the eyes of these very quick uh, animals. It's really perfect. In a way, <laughs> this could be the most important summary of the review. So that would be the focusing and as you can see on that sequence uh, there is of course the second part of what really matters and it is the speed in which we are able to shoot. As you probably know from technical specifications Canon R5 Mark II is able to shoot up to 30 frames per second. And it doesn't sound that exciting when you just read it on a paper, but once you forgot and you just keep your shutter button pushed, it's just within a couple of seconds you've got, like me here, 130 frames. And uh, again, I think this is quite interesting and important example of the speed we are really able to use in this camera. And there is one feature called pre-shooting. And it means that if you have pressed the shutter button, the camera starts to record. Let me give you an example. If I really would like to capture the very moment when the bus appears behind the corner, the pre-shooting is the way. Because I half press the shutter button, I wait, and then if I press it fully, uh, of course the, the bus would be much further, but I can go back in time uh, and get the very exact moment. Well, by the way, Canon says uh, the pre-shooting is about 15 frames. Certainly, this is amazing feature. And really important part, eye control. If I set it on, what happens is that suddenly I can control the focusing frame by looking through the viewfinder. So what is actually happening is that if I turn my eye towards the bird, it's what I'm doing now, nothing happens at this stage, but if I confirm it by hitting 
the shutter button, look at this. The frame just jumps there immediately. If I go back, it's there. Now I can point to the flower and push the shutter button. Look at this. It's really amazing because under certain circumstances, the level of control is just fantastic. What is true though is that if you need to control everything and you just look to your shutter speed and then go there and go back, your viewfinder would be full of moving circles. So I don't think this is to be used permanently. It's just a feature that you should turn on and turn off and just use it on a very specific conditions and situations. And now I suggest we just go for a short walk here in Prague. And of course, we are talking about a top camera, so it doesn't really make much sense to say the similar things like I would be saying normally, like, are the shots nice or not? Because of course, this is one of the most modern and most sophisticated cameras on the market. So of course, the image quality is great. So all these shots are JPEG without any edits. We'll get to RAWs in a couple of minutes, but uh, just take this as, well, a chance to see what to expect and when you'll be just using the very simple, very basic setting. And if I zoom, the details are great, as you can see here. And a walk in and beautiful nature. Typically, of course, uh, we in the Czech Republic quite often go for a beer, as I did here, because I was waiting for the sun to set. I really wanted to test what does this camera offer uh, during night shooting. And uh, again, you can see a couple of examples here and the famous Prague castle in the blue hour. And it's up to you how do you read these shots. But of course, I was more than satisfied. Famous king of Bohemia, Charles IV, and the famous tower of the Charles Bridge. Of course, once we start shooting in night, it would be worth exploring what to expect from higher ISO levels. This is 25600, and here is a detail. 51200, and detail here. And here we get to the extended ISO 100 And there, of course, now the, you can clearly see on these details that the, the well, the noise is clearly there. But uh, if we go back to 51,200, this is quite what we would expect. We can test the same thing here in downtown Prague. So we start at 1600 and we go up, up, up. This would be 51,200. And this is the extended ISO and the details. 51,000 and extended ISO, of course, has a lot of noise, but it still can be used. Whereas 51,000 is certainly okay. And a real life test, <laughs> your favorite dog called Amba again, ISO 51,200. In the dark parts, you can see the noise, but still, I think the results are all right. When we speak about editing, just a very brief note, of course, uh, many users of this camera would be using RAW files. So I took the camera to the hills of Moravia and took a couple of test shots here from this valley. And then I opened it in Photoshop and you can see that you can, of course, play with that for many, many minutes or hours. And uh, I just wanted to mention it because, of course, we are talking about a professional camera. RAW files would, of course, be an important part of the workflow. Let's briefly look at the main settings. For experienced photographers, there would be no big surprises. Uh, you'll find very similar buttons to anything you have owned before. And, of course, one of the key options would be to hit the Q here and you can very quickly set whatever you want uh, to set such a white balance or whatever might be useful. And also there is the very useful button MFN here on the front side of the camera. And if I hit it, I can very quickly decide which of the parameters would I like to change. So again, white balance or of course here many other important uh, settings. What really matters for that camera is anything which is connected to focusing. So here you can set the AF points, the number, their behavior. It's pretty obvious. Then you have the key settings when you decide between one shot and servo. And of course, do not forget, uh, and you won't, I'm sure, that the key settings is also here detection of people animals and vehicles again 
very useful. What should be said though that these settings are really basic and the core of all these special functions must be set on other places as well. Of course you are able to move the focusing frame manually like I do here but uh, you probably will not be doing it much often because there is so many options of automatic detections that you just won't need it at all. And of course you can set all of this in the menu as well. There are some basic settings like here but look at this there are some very special options. One of them is called action priority and it's one of these fantastic functions which this camera brought to us. If I enable it I have the option to select whether I would be working on soccer, basketball or volleyball and basically what happens is that once you activate it the camera knows that there are some very specific types of actions like short or heather or short pass and once that action happens the camera knows what to do which I think helps you a lot. I did not try it yet but I will I promise. And then also what is quite fantastic is something called registered people priority and what happens is that you are able to take a shot of uh, somebody or you are even able to register the other person from your card. For instance I just took a shot of my grandfather and I would be able to give him priority. One more point of course uh, Canon R5 Mark II would also be extremely important for videographers but I have to apologize at that point because I decided not to cover video at all because uh, there are two reasons. First is that it would certainly require a very specific testing, a very different one than I do. The second is to be honest that I'm really not good at evaluating video capabilities of cameras so what I do now is what I do always so as I speak you can see some examples of video and I can promise you that sooner or later I'll get to that topic. So thank you so much for your attention. I hope I gave you some inspiration and take care. I am Jan from Prague, the Czech Republic.